previously during the French Baroque. The top one percent of the one percent was King Louis the Fourteenth. With his wealth and power, he dictated the contemporary art style during his reign. You can see classical influence, formal and geometric patterns, very majestic, lavish, and at times way over the top. At the end of his reign, the crown passed to Louis the Fifteenth, age five. And the pent-up aristocrats were no longer confined to Versailles and rushed back to Paris to rebuild. With Philip d'Orléans as regent, a new contemporary art style emerged, shunning any and all from style Louis the Fourteenth. This movement, the Rococo movement, began in architecture and interior design with the nobles reconstructing their homes. They built ornate homes to continue gathering and socializing within their high society circles. They too needed to display their wealth with beautiful natural shapes, adorning everything from their walls to their furniture. That's where the name comes from. The French word rocaille, which means stones or shells. Before pimp my crib, before bling bling, it was rococo to define ostentatious displays of luxury and affluence. You can see it in the silverware and glassware they used at parties, the music they listened to, the fashions they wore, and finally the art, the paintings, the sculptures to put next to to match all that bling. Let's take a closer look at some Rococo paintings. Natural patterns, curving, flowing. Soft pastel colors, light, graceful, gentle. Compare that to the dramatic and chiaroscuro of Baroque. Rococo was playful, less serious, less serious in subject matter, less serious in brushstrokes, less serious in composition, less serious in contrasting colors. Yet there is still a sense of motion and intrigue, created by asymmetry, by being off-center, by using curves, C curves, S curves. Do you see it? Do you feel it? Do you feel the calmness, the tranquility, the aristocrats outdoors, the countryside? Relaxing or having a fun time, the inspired, imaginary, utopian landscapes, almost dreamlike, with the elegant ladies and gentlemen in their fancy, high-class parties. Who is the father of this art? Of the wealthy, for the wealthy. Introducing Antoine Watteau. Born October 10, 1684, in what was the Spanish Netherlands, but now a part of France. When he turned 18, he traveled to Paris to apprentice and study art under Claude Guillot, an artist who designed scenery for stages. Watteau evolved this to become his trademark: fête galante or elegant party. You can see all the elements of Rococo: noble ladies and men, check; utopian landscapes, check; classy party, check. Later, in 1712, he was accepted into the Academy of Fine Arts. Yes, that academy with the rigid structure and no room for Watteau's pioneering art style. In fact. They gave him the unprecedented, brand new title of painter of Fête Galante. His masterpiece, Pilgrimage to Kithria, depicts couples on the mythical island of Kithria in 
various stages of the journey of love. Why Kithria? It is the birthplace of the goddess of love, Venus. Following closely behind Watu is Francois Boucher, who began his career by engraving the works of Watu. The combination of his relationship with Madame de Pompadour and his sensual art style with inspirations of Renaissance propelled him to become the most in-demand painter in France. Recognize this painting? It is by a third Rococo artist, Jean Honoré Fragonard. It was quite shocking back in 1767. Shocking because women's legs were usually hidden under long skirts. And just as the Rococo movement gained steam, it puttered to an end. Beginning as a reaction to style Louis XIV, it triggered its own reaction and gave way to neoclassicism. And artists like Jacques Louis David, and so the pendulum swings back toward the classical and away from. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.